Hello, I'm Mick Mulroy, and I'd like to start off by thanking you for inviting me to speak at this conference. Um, I'm a really big fan of Nancy Sherman and uh, Donald Robertson, and it's a really good company to keep. I can tell you right now I'm not a scholar, I'm a student, just like uh, I imagine a lot of you are. But I'd like to start off by saying something about the National Guard. Uh, I was, a, by way of background, I was a Marine, uh, I retired. I uh, served in the CIA uh, as a paramilitary operations officer and retired from there. And then I spent two years as a Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for the Middle East under both Secretary Mattis and Secretary Esper. And I can tell you that everywhere I traveled, the National Guard was there. Uh, Secretary Mattis sent us out to uh, the Sinai Peninsula in Egypt to check out the base that secured the peace treaty from the Israeli uh, Egyptians. Uh, and who was there? National Guard. I went to Syria several times, and the bases that we had there, tip of the spear, who was there? National Guard. Uh, I was in meetings with the secretary, in meetings with my own counterparts in other countries, and one of the first or last things they asked was about getting on the state partnership program with the National Guard. So I'm not playing to my audience, but I really, I know you know what you do, but I can tell you that it's appreciated uh, by the secretary and everybody in his staff, which is including me. So why am I talking about stoicism? I grew up, my father taught me ethics based on Greek philosophy. And one of the things I thought was most important uh, or most interesting was stoicism. Uh, perhaps it's the military mindset that I had at that age. I don't know, but I liked it. It's being grounded in ethics and everything that flowed from that. And so I'm sure you hear a lot about it today, the wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance uh, elements that, that are key to the Stoic philosophy. That's why I think this is such a good philosophy for the military. To start with wisdom. Wisdom to me is not being happy with what you know, but wanting to know more, being creative, being innovative, always looking for what's next. That's what leaders have to do. If you look at our national defense strategy, which we came out in 2018, it prioritized our near peer competitors, Russia and China. There is a lot of concern that they are getting very close, if not at the capabilities that we possess, and that it would be, as they say, a near peer war. What is gonna turn the tide on that? Wisdom. Knowledge, trying to outthink the enemy before there's any kind of conflict. I think that from an NCO to a staff NCO to the officers, whether they company field grade or general officers, is key to the military. And it is a pillar of stoicism. The second uh, thing I like to bring up is courage. I mean, that's kind of obvious. We hold courage up to be the most important thing uh, when it comes to uh, actions in, in combat. Medal of Honor uh, recipients are a great example. But it's more than that. Courage itself is courage on the battlefield, which is overcoming fear and anger, in my opinion. And those two things, I think, have been the biggest problems when it's come to um, war crimes throughout history. Ours, other countries, the inability to harness anger and the inability to harness fear. Together, I think, marks courage. And that can be on the battlefield or it can be at home. And I think we all know that a lot of the domestic issues that our servicemen and women deal with come from anger uncontrolled at home. But courage is also uh, the ability to stand up for what's right. It's not our job simply to look the other way. We have to be the ones that call out what is right and what is wrong. And that leads into the third, justice. Justice, in my opinion, is equal, equality for all. You have to be the leaders that your soldiers want you to be which is you are blind to race, gender, religion, or any of those other categories. It is equality for all. That is a key pillar 
for stoicism. And the last thing I have to say, temperance. You know, I could have used some temperance when I was a junior Marine. I can tell you that right now. And I think we all could certain times in our life. Uh, you know, as Aristotle said, moderation in all things. Uh, moderation in your temper, moderation in, you know, your consumption, for example, of alcohol. Uh, I'm recording this, by the way, on New Year's Eve, so I don't know if it holds on New Year's Eve, but you get the point. Temperance is something that if you learn early, it will help you with almost everything you do in life. The last thing I'd like to bring up is the idea of resilience, because I know a lot of you in the audience deal directly with our servicemen and women and their families uh, when it comes to this topic. I'm no um, novice when it comes to it. I've had multiple friends, like I'm sure many of you who died in the last 20 years during this conflict. I have four goddaughters who are all gold star daughters, whose uh, fathers are at Arlington National Cemetery and at the Wall of uh, Langley. Um, I've seen what good counseling, what good uh, organizations do for those families and for those uh, brothers and sisters that were left behind after the perishing of, of one of our fallen. Uh, I think stoicism, and I'm sure you're going to hear a lot about this today, is one of those things that attaches everybody to their history. It's not something that was just made up a year ago. It goes back to the dawn of civilization, Western civilization. And it's very much been a part of our military history. I'm sure you're going to hear a lot about Marcus Aurelius. As some of you may know, my former boss, Secretary Mattis, used to carry a copy of Meditations that were that was uh, uh, his thoughts and his reflections. He's a great example of why the military is so interested and it's so much in their mindset. He had everything. He was an emperor. He was emperor of Rome. He could have he could have snapped his fingers and got everything he ever wanted, but did he? Nope. He went out to the front line with his forces. He lived with them. He ate with them. He endured the same hardships. And then he self-reflected on himself on what was the best thing to do. And that was what Meditations was. He never intended for it to be published. He, in fact, told him to burn it. So it's not a self-promoting uh, book that he hoped we'd read one day and say, wow, great. Marcus Aurelius was a great man. He actually wanted it burned. Uh, but it's not just him. If you look at Epictetus, former slave, overcome uh, being uh, severely injured deliberately. Uh, you look at Seneca and his thoughts on fear. It has been a martial philosophy almost its whole existence. But that doesn't mean it's only for the military, our soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, or paramilitary officers. It's really for everybody. And one of the concepts I think uh, you'll learn about today, and I hope you do, is that it's cosmopolitan. It is a, what they call a universal brotherhood and sisterhood. It doesn't matter what religion you are or which culture you come from or ethnic group, stoicism has something for everybody. It's also not dogmatic. It doesn't just tell you exactly what you need to believe in the story. It's really up for you in a lot of the interpretations. But I do hope we get back to a time where ethics leads, where handshakes mean something, where giving your word is all you need. I don't know if that's Pollyannish, but I know that this philosophy can help us do that. I know that it can help us with the young men and women who are coming in our services. I know it can help with the, dealing with the loss of a colleague personally, and I think it's something you should consider. I hope it actually becomes an institutionalized philosophy of our military. So I'm going to sign off right now, but I can tell you I'm going to be watching this conference because I hope to learn a lot. Thank you very much for having me.